Talk about peaking too early. <coughs> oh, God. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shows that lost steam after a great first season. <sighs> for this list, we're taking a look at TV shows that got off to a strong start, but could never recapture the same magic going forward. We've excluded True Detective because, while season 2 was certainly a step backwards, the show still has time to redeem itself. I don't want to look hungry. Never do anything out of hunger. Not even eating. Number 10, Californication. I probably won't go down in history, but I will go down on your sister. While not everybody was a fan of Californication when it first premiered, its dark humor, sexuality, and David Duchovny's pessimistically charming performance had numerous Showtime subscribers adding the show to their watch list. <sighs> Nobody likes you. You're ugly and your mother dresses are funny. Now smile, you douche. Much like a middle-aged man who needs Viagra to keep going, though, this edgy comedy series wasn't able to satisfy its audience for very long. Can you show up on time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Play nice with others? Maybe, maybe yeah. And you take a note without getting defensive? A true flavor of the month, Californication became a mostly forgettable show that only your horny single uncle watched. I'm going to amend that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we made some love just then. And you know how much I hate that phrase, but we made that shit. Number nine, House of Lies. Consulting's like dissing a really pretty girl so that she'll want you more. We need them to think they're almost perfect so we can book that afterward. We're starting to see a cycle with Showtime original series. Most of them start off fresh, fun, and full of potential. Counseled out. That's consultant for fire. It's not good. Eventually, however, the network just runs them into the ground. House of Lies certainly started off with a strong setup and an endearing cast that included Don Cheadle and Kristen Bell. Someone who is so afraid that they can barely function, mm. let alone have an authentic moment with another human being. And so you insulate yourself with your numbers and your models and your formulae. D you got me. Alas, its satire of big business ultimately went from being cynically funny to being cynically unpleasant after just one year. You, you gotta make a list, okay? Your people. People that we can post, but you know, people that can also keep their mouth shut. Okay. Granted, it makes sense that a show called House of Lies would become so unlikable. If we don't care about or even like any of these people, though, why should we stick around? How'd your meeting go yesterday, Doug? Went as smooth as butter on a baby's ass. Why would you put butter on a baby's ass? That's figure of speech. <laughs> Number eight, Desperate Housewives. Oh, Mary Alice, what did you do? Remember when Desperate Housewives was a cultural phenomenon? It was a ratings hit, a critical darling, and an awards favorite. And in those rare instances where there is no ulterior motive, we're so taken aback that we may fail to recognize the truth. Following the insanely entertaining first season, however, this soap opera started to repeat a familiar formula, and the novelty wore off. Talk to sweetie, why are you behaving like this? I don't know what you're talking about. It's not like we can't see what's going on. We know you're drinking again. <sighs> Although it never reached the same level of quality, Desperate Housewives managed to deliver several more seasons that balanced enticing drama and comedy nonetheless. Money can't buy happiness. Well, sure it can. That's just a lie we tell poor people to keep them from rioting. Gabby. It's a joke. Lighten up. Still, it quickly went from being the show everybody was talking about to just being another guilty pleasure. Let Julie go and take me instead. Number seven, Glee. You know that kid who's really popular in high school and then grows up to be a complete loser? That's Glee for ya. The first season was a witty and joyous musical comedy that immediately spawned a legion of proud Gleeks. Hell to the naw. Look, I'm not down with this background singing nonsense. As the seasons went on, however, the series became exclusively interested in selling songs on iTunes, whether they connected to a story or not. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but here's my number, so call me maybe. 
it didn't help that a dozen pointless, underdeveloped new students joined New Directions over time. It was so easy living day by day. Meanwhile, the characters we once loved turned into inconsistent stereotypes. In the purest sense, this Ryan Murphy production was a true one-hit wonder. Hey, so glad you could make it now. Number six, Smallville. So what are you, man or Superman? I haven't figured it out yet. Stretching Superman's origin story out to 10 seasons worth of television is no easy task. To give Smallville credit, each season offered a handful of great episodes in an overall enjoyable show. That being said, even the most diehard fans would have to admit there were a lot of stupid storylines. You must find the human vessel and destroy it, no matter who it may be. How stupid? Vampires and stride gum product placement. That's how stupid. The only season that was great from start to finish was season one, which did a wonderful job at depicting a young Clark Kent coming to terms with his powers. We just wish it hadn't taken him so long to put on the cape. Number five, Prison Break. You've seen the blueprints. Better than that. I've got them on me. The first season of Prison Break delivered some of the most thrilling television you'll ever see, with compelling characters, gripping action, and plenty of edge-of-your-seat twists. Why do you want to see Boros so bad anyhow? Because he's my brother. Once our heroes broke out of the big house, though, what else could be done with this premise? What do we do now? Well, the characters could go on the run, get thrown into another prison, and then get caught up in a ridiculous conspiracy. You say you got a good shot of walking out of here a free man. When's the transfer? Tomorrow. Just, just hold on, man, one more day. Yeah, so not too much, unfortunately. As much as we loved Prison Break in its prime, there's only so much story you can squeeze out of this concept. This ends today. I came here seeking justice. The justice I now know the system cannot provide. Number four, True Blood. What are you? I told you, I'm a waitress. Even if the vampire craze didn't suck you in, the first season of True Blood still gave us interesting characters, a refreshing sense of humor, and an engaging murder mystery. You're our first. With each passing season, however, Bill and Sookie's on-again, off-again romance grew more tedious. My life is too short for all that. Tara grew more annoying. All that stuff's in the past. And a lot of the graphic imagery just grew gratuitous, even by HBO standards. <sighs> Seriously, what was the deal with those sex-crazed were-panthers? A were-what? Much like Bill Compton, True Blood overstayed its welcome on this earth and ultimately went out on a whimpering note. <sighs> Number three, Dark Angel. You're a thief? Girl's gonna make a living. <laughs> Remember Dark Angel? When this sci-fi action series premiered, everybody thought it would be the next big thing. Sorry. With a breakthrough performance from Jessica Alba and a big-budget pilot directed by James Cameron, we can see why. And if I ever find out you're fooling around on Natalie again, you're the one who's going to be hanging by your ankles three stories up. You understand, Calvin? Okay. Yet the show became overconfident in itself going into the next season, introducing new plot elements that just didn't work and storylines that were just plain dumb. Is he dead? Do I look like I'm dead? It wasn't a huge surprise when Dark Angel started to plummet in the ratings and got cancelled after only two seasons. And I'll try to never let it happen again, but you can't go outside. It's too dangerous, and if people see who you- I know. People are afraid of what they don't understand. Number two, revenge. This is not a story about forgiveness. 
Starting off with a bang, the first season of Revenge was juicy, scandalous, and just a lot of fun. It was everything one could want from a primetime soap. Well, then don't let them see your weakness. It's the first thing they'll use against you. At the beginning of season two, though, it became painfully clear that Emily Thorne wasn't going to get her revenge on the Grayson family anytime soon. But that was a promise I couldn't keep. Come on, girl. Revenge doesn't need to be this drawn out and convoluted. Just shoot Victoria in the head and call it a day. I'm not going to put Victoria in prison. I'm going to put her in the ground. And don't you dare try to stop me. I won't. Instead, the creators delayed the inevitable until the show was finally cancelled. Revenge went from being a dish best served cold to a dish served stale. We still have to find Victoria. We don't know where she's hiding. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Son of a bitch! It's Sage for cleansing the spirits in the house. Too many bad memories in here. He wants me to meet Mason alone. Why? He didn't say. You're lying. <laughs> yes, I am. But you're still gonna have to trust me. Uh-uh. Take that crap off my money. You not giving me a present. You're paying me for weed. Excuse me for trying to bring a little beauty into an ugly world. <laughs> Number one. Heroes. Not a miracle, Mom. You were dead. Many times someone rises from the dead. I'd say that's a miracle. If you just watched the first season of Heroes, you might think that you've seen one of the greatest TV dramas of all time. Alas, some shows either die a hero or live long enough to see themselves become a villain. Did my dad make me this way? When it comes to heroes, it's hard to think of a series that had us so immediately hooked and then left us dangling. Scotty! Scotty! Come on! It's really shocking just how messy this once promising sci-fi series became, digging itself deeper and deeper with inexplicable characters and nonsensical storylines. It's not about you finding some clever way to kill Noah Bennett. I'm not gonna kill him. I'm gonna destroy him. Was it even really worth trying to revive the franchise with the uneven Heroes Reborn? While other memories can deceive, the ones that make you believe you know the truth, they're the dangerous ones. Honestly, who even cared by that point? Yeah, Firefly did a movie to wrap things up. Buffy the Vampire Slayer continued on as a comic book. Heroes gradually lowered the quality season by season till we were grateful it ended. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? I do. What show let you down after one great season? That was the happiest 10 seconds of my life. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Freedom. Finally.